Hey friends! Welcome back to our channel. My name is Lynn Allure. If you are new here, hi, hello, welcome. On this channel, we talk a lot about self-improvement and personal development, making money, saving money, investing money, all that good stuff. So if you enjoy topics like that, definitely subscribe and join the party. So we're in a bit of a different setup right now. I just didn't feel like setting up the big old industrial camera. So hopefully this camera setting will suffice. It's going to have to because that's what we've got to work with. Okay. You do what you can with what you've got. Okay. Basically, many of us have multiple streams of revenue, multiple streams of income, and one of those income streams might be your full-time nine to five corporate job or nine to five job in general. On Sunday, I uploaded a video on tips to ace any single interview. And I said that today, Wednesday, I would upload a video with a survival guide tips to succeed in your work environment, specifically if you have a corporate job. If you haven't already gone to check out that video, definitely go check it out. I love the conversations that we end up getting into in the comment section. So if you have any tips or tricks, definitely leave it down below in the comments. So we're gonna jump right into this video. So my number one tip to surviving your corporate job is to schedule self-care time. A lot of us go through grade school, we go through four years of college or however long you went through it. All this schooling, daydreaming about what your nine to five career is going to be. You think you're gonna get your bomb internship. You're gonna be Lauren Conrad from Laguna Beach. You know, life is gonna be sweet. And then you get your first nine to five job and you're like, what? This is it? Like the this is what I signed up for. Now, some of you all landed your first role and it was your dream job and you are living, you are flourishing and that is amazing. I'm happy for you. But the reality is a lot of us didn't experience that. I know for me, I was so excited to land my first nine to five job. I landed it and I was like, well, no, wait, this is it? I do this day in and day out. I go home, I sleep, I come back and do it again tomorrow. Um, this is very anticlimactic. Well, where does the fun begin? It can get really mundane, really boring. It's the same processes over and over. It can get training. I'm not saying that working a nine to five job is all terrible and that it's all bad, but the reality is it can be very boring depending on the industry. Especially if you get into a cycle of wake up, go to work, come back home, sleep, do it all over again. And you don't really have time to invest in yourself, self care time, time to unwind, time to do things that you enjoy doing, not things that you have to do. When I had to be in the office by nine o'clock, my self care time was in the morning. And that was also incentive for me to wake up early because I know if I don't wake up early, I'm not gonna get time to meditate and pray and be still and quiet. I'm not gonna get time to pamper myself a little bit, you know, dance in the mirror to my music and stuff like that. So that was incentive for me to wake up early. I scheduled that time as self care time and I was very intentional about it as well. I understand not all of us have the same circumstances. I don't know what it's like to be a mom because I'm not one, but I know that it's one of the hardest jobs in the world, if not the hardest job in the world. You're responsible for the upbringing of an entire human being. But I would say try to take advantage of any alone time that you have and be intentional about unwinding and intentional about doing things that you enjoy don't take up too much brain time and that are very light-hearted use the commute to listen to a funny podcast or if you take the train or bus read a book that you enjoy listen to some really good feel good music or something just schedule times that you're intentional about feeding your soul with things that you enjoy doing and things that you want to do not things that you have to do it can be difficult to find self-care time especially if you're working on a side hustle simultaneously and you're working on making your side hustle your main hustle a lot of your leisure time a lot of your free time you have to dedicate towards your side businesses but schedule at least an hour every single day to just feed your mind and your soul with things that you enjoy doing and things that you want to do not things that you have to do my next tip is that no one cared that you stayed late sis bro beloved Nobody cares that you're still in the office until 9 p.m. Because you know why? They're at home with their wife, their husband, their kids. They're watching Sex in the City on their couch. They don't care that you're in the office still. No one also cares that you're coming into the office three hours before everybody else. Nobody cares. What matters is the time that you were hired to be there and how you show up while you're there. While you're there, you're effective. While you're there, you're doing your job and you're doing your job well, which we'll talk about. While you're there, you're pleasant. While you're there, you're effective, you're efficient, you're doing your job well, and you're doing what you were hired to do. Your salary is based off of working 
37.5 hours in a week or 40 hours a week or whatever your contract is set up to be your salary pertains to those type of hours not for you to come in at six o'clock and leave at eight o'clock no one's paying attention and nobody cares nobody is paying attention because everyone is working on their own life outside of work because work life balance is important just as I said scheduling self-care time is important it's important to have a life outside of your work because you end up resenting your job your role your co-workers you might even resent the whole industry really depending on the boundaries that you set for yourself set hours of operations hours of business that you work within and anything outside of that you're not doing anything work related you're not talking anything work related unless you are being paid to work outside of these work hours you are not being paid to work outside of these work hours so it's important to create boundaries if you are answering emails at 8 p.m at night people are going to start sending you emails at 8 p.m at night expecting you to reply they're going to be calling you at 8 p.m at night and you can't be mad at anyone but yourself because you created these boundaries and you teach people how to treat you you teach people your boundaries by your actions and if in the past you've been answering emails at 8 p.m they're going to just expect that of you so you just need to kind of redefine your boundaries you don't need to tell people hi hello i'm no longer accepting emails late at night through your actions progressively people will start to realize oh okay this is the time that lynn answers her emails so i can send it now but she's not going to answer it now since we're on the topic of boundaries you need to be able to say no and learn how to say no effectively it's not about what you say it's more so about how you say it there's a difference between you saying uh, yeah, no, I'm not gonna do that. That's not my job or sorry. I don't get paid to do that or um, Yeah, I can't do your job for you and things like that There are very passive-aggressive or rude ways to deliver messages. And that's not what you want. You want to be able to effectively politely and respectfully tell people no instead of saying yeah no sorry i can't do your job for you i have my own things to worry about you can say something along the lines of i would absolutely love to help you out with that i'm just working on the financial reports for this friday's p l meeting if i finish sooner than i expected it to then i'll definitely help you out with that simple as that saying if i finish sooner than i expected to i will help you out with that so that just tells the person that there is no guarantee that I'm gonna get around to whatever you're asking me to do. Either do it yourself or find someone else to do it. Also made it clear that I'm working on my own tasks and my own deadlines. And once I complete that, then I can be assistance to you. I would love to know how you guys tell people that you work with or in workspaces, how you tell people no respectfully, effectively, and politely tell people to F off. The key words are effectively, politely, and respectfully, okay? But yes, it's very important to be able to tell people no. Especially as a junior level position, people are gonna constantly be throwing their responsibilities onto you, expecting you to just take it. Just remember that you can create boundaries by respectfully telling people no. You need to prioritize your tasks before anything else. Which brings me to my next point, which is pretty obvious and it goes without saying but the next point is to do your job and do your job well you were hired for a specific role because you get into the company and you realize that you're able to do other things doesn't mean that you just automatically start jumping onto other tasks and other projects within the company First, you do what you were hired to do before you expand, before you start collaborating with other departments and working on new tasks and trying to create new systems. That's not what your job task is. That is not what your role is. And that's gonna become very clear to you once something that you're primarily in charge of isn't done correctly and the question automatically becomes, well, who is responsible? Who was assigned that task? Who was supposed to be looking after that? Who was supposed to be taking care of that? And the answer is gonna be you. You were supposed to be taking care of that. That was your responsibility, but you didn't do it. And now you're sitting there with egg on your head because you were what? You were helping Suzanne in HR with payroll. Were you hired to do payroll with Suzanne? No, okay? You were hired to do your task. I don't know why that got so specific, but basically you need to be able to do your job first before you expand and diversify and before you take on new tasks because you were hired to do that job and that job first which brings me to my next point is that you might not be entitled for a pay raise and this is just the reality working as an employee 
Sometimes you feel overworked and you feel like I've been putting my best into this and I've been trying to keep up. I hate to say this because this could sound a little strange, but sometimes there can be a sense of entitlement. You doing your job effectively doesn't mean that you're entitled to a pay raise. You were hired to do that job. So you doing it well doesn't mean that you should be getting paid more. Of course, at the end of the year, when there's end of year bonuses and things like that, then if everyone's getting it, yeah, you're entitled to one as well, but you're not entitled to a higher pay grade if you've been doing the job that you were hired for and you were paid for that job role. If you're completing your job tasks or your responsibilities are taken care of and you've got that under control and then you start to take on more tasks, more responsibilities and more duties around the office or around your department, then that's different. That most definitely does warrant some sort of pay compensation or pay rate increase of some sorts, but you doing the job that you were hired to do, <laughs> I hate to break it to you, but that's what you were hired to do. And that's where the importance of negotiating your salary upfront comes into play, because once you are in a job role and you do accept a certain salary, it's hard for you to expect percentage increase to be doing the same role that you've been doing for the past year. Like you can't be hired to do a job for $60,000 and then after you've been doing it for a year, you're like, damn, I definitely deserve $70,000 to do the exact same role. It's just most likely not gonna happen. So that brings me to my next point, which is communication is key in the office. We can go into so many different facets when it comes to communication in the office, but I'm gonna talk about communicating your wants and needs specifically. Your manager is not your boyfriend or your girlfriend, your significant other, whoever. Your manager is not responsible for knowing your feelings and knowing that, oh, there's been a certain change in your mood lately, what's going on? If there's something in the office workplace that you find to be extremely bothersome, I would definitely say communicate that once again, effectively and respectfully communicate that with your manager ask for one-on-one -on -one meetings send things in email but the key in any conversation that you do have is to think about the outcome think about the end result the end goal what you're trying to achieve by having this conversation which brings me to my next point never bring up a problem if you don't have a solution to go with it if everything's doing fine if the system has been working the same way the system's been working for years these are the operations that occur within the department these are just the logistics by which every employee has adhered to in the past umpteen years prior to you working there if you're gonna point out a flaw within the system always back that up with a solution that tells your manager or whoever you're reporting to that you are a forward thinker and you are solution based as opposed to a problem seeker no one wants to work with a problem seeker you always want to complain about everything you have a problem about everything but you don't have any solutions you don't have any suggestions to combat the problem or to get past this hurdle. So presenting problems with solutions as well shows that you are taking initiative and that you're a problem solver. Everyone loves working with a problem solver. Okay, so the next thing that everyone loves to talk about because it's so much fun is workplace politics. There's always gonna be some sort of like, click culture in an office. He only got the job because he's the president's nephew and she only got the job because she's sleeping with the boss. <laughs> all this other stuff, there's gonna be whispers, there's gossip, there are rumors, there are little clicks. Sometimes the office can mimic high school, that dreaded period of your life where everything was so gossipy and clicky and juvenile and immature. Unfortunately, a lot of those people grow up physically, but not mentally. They're still very immature. They bring that ish to the workplace. It's okay, it's okay. We all deal with that, right? I would just say to remain neutral at all times. Remain neutral and have a good rapport with everyone across the board, but don't get too consumed or indulged in one type of click within the company. That's how workplace drama starts and you do not want to be a part of workplace drama. How disgusting for you to have to spend a majority of your waking hours at a place where there is drama. We, we finished high school a long time ago, okay? Do not get caught up in it. Remain neutral. And also, that's how you develop low work morale. It can also be contagious. If people that you are close to within the company do not like their job, then it becomes 
contagious and suddenly you're noticing things about the job that maybe before didn't used to bother you but because your close friend in the company is always complaining about it naturally as a human being you're starting to notice and pick up on these things too and now you're just like oh my god this is terrible like I don't like my job I don't like this company anymore well work morale is contagious always stay clear of the workplace drama you know you can listen with an open ear and wow oh my god are you serious do not ever chime in with your perspectives your opinions nothing and try to cut the conversation as short as possible people pick up on these things and notice that okay she's not with the negativity she's not with the drama let me not even bring this talk to her which brings me to my next point which is your workplace bestie i think that having a friend at work definitely makes the workday go by quicker. It's a little bit of an incentive or something to look forward to in your workday to see your friend or a colleague that you really enjoy, but use the term friend very loosely. I think it's important to become friendly with people in your workplace, but you don't necessarily want to be best friends with them because it causes you to start talking about work when you're not working, which is one of the points I said, like let's not discuss work when we're not working. You start to discuss work all the time, 24 seven without even realizing so there's no real cutoff between work life and personal life and then also just in case you end up not really liking this friend too much now you have to constantly see them in the office and things can get weird i would say become friendly with people at work but do not become besties or best friends with them unless of course that's how your friendship naturally progresses then go for it but yeah i would definitely not say to intentionally become best friends with people in your workplace. Brings us to our next point, which is to develop relationships, rapports, and connections with other members in other departments of your company. This is really, really, really important, actually. If there's anything that you do in any workplace, I think that this could be like top five most important things that you do. Um, amongst, of course, leaving a, a positive impression on like the people that you work with is to actually gain real relationships and real connections with people in other departments of the company because that's when people are able to advocate for you in rooms that you're not in or at tables that you you haven't been invited to. So at one of my roles in the past, the whole entire building was owned by this company. I worked on the third level and the fourth level was all the senior management, senior executives, everyone who reported to them worked on the third level and then we have the very entry level and junior level positions were on the first and second level. So I worked on the third level and at the time I was still in university. I got a role on the fourth level as assistant controller. The person who had that role prior to me had his degree, he had many years of experience, he had his CPA designation that he just recently attained. He had many years of experience, but the person who suggested that role to me was the controller. And I got to build a rapport with him at the Christmas work party. I met him, he seemed really cool. Ever since the Christmas party, anytime I see him, we chopping it up. Hey, what's up, how are you? How's your wife? Simple pleasantries, really. I wasn't trying to build a rapport with him with the intention of being hired as assistant controller or being hired for any type of position, but from the moment he met me, he started to pay attention to my work ethic and things that I produced and in certain meetings, he would pay attention and things like that. So when that position opened and they were looking to hire within the company, he suggested me to be in that role. He didn't suggest my manager, who I report to and essentially reports to him, he specifically suggested me and he advocated for me in a room that I was not privy to, in a conversation that I was not a part of. And I've heard this type of scenario happen time and time again with many different people being referred to different roles, different job opportunities and different industries based off of connections that they made with people. Building connections in other departments really helps. Not only does it help you to expand your network, when you're friends with people in other departments, you kind of get a greater sense of how the operations of the entire company work and it helps you to do your role a little bit better because you understand how what you do affects other departments. You just get more wisdom and more insight on the whole entire company structure. Also, if you're looking for a career change or industry swap, it's also really great to just have someone or have some sort of connection in an industry that you were maybe thinking about. I know networking can sound like a really big word, but really it's not, it doesn't need to be pressure associated with building these kind of connections. It's literally just looking for spirits and personalities of people that you just relate to naturally. Building pleasant rapports with people. That's Set. Okay, so my next tip is a little bit of a vanity point, but we are humans and unfortunately this is a factor, but my next point is to dress to impress. You might have heard the little saying of 
dress for the role that you want, not necessarily the role that you have. And there's a bit of truth to that. I mean, you still wanna dress within the company dress code. You still wanna adhere to what the company culture is, but actually put a slight effort into how you show up. Don't come up with disgruntled hair, wrinkly clothes, stained clothes. Make sure your hygiene is always on point. Make sure you're wearing deodorant, okay? Because we are human and one of our senses are sight and smell. If you come into work looking like you just rolled out of bed, smelling like you haven't showered, unfortunately, people just automatically perceive you as incapable, incompetent of carrying on real important business. There's a possibility that you can start to lose a slight bit of respect from people if you just show up like you didn't care like you don't care about this job or this role or things like that so you definitely want to show up like you actually care about your role about your position and like you put some sort of effort into showing up to be here and my last and final tip is to never attribute your self-worth to your position or to your performance of a company some things in life are just not guaranteed you never know when you might be permanently laid off or fired or demoted and things like that and if you attribute your self-worth to your position in the company your title in a company or your performance within a company the moment that things aren't going on the trajectory that you expect them to automatically your self-worth decreases and the reality of things is it's just a job this is just one stage in your life and one component of your multi-layered life some things are just not going to go the way you planned them to but that doesn't mean that your life is over or that you're not worthy of stepping into the, the next best thing so just remember beyond everything outside of work you're still an amazing human being you still have a lot to offer this world you still exude positivity and happiness and confidence and you're still a very very high value so that is it for this video hopefully this helped at least one person i would love to know you all's survival tips in the workplace down below can you relate to any of these topics do you have any other suggestions let's get the discussions going down below i'll talk to you all in our next video love you all so much love you to the moon and back be true to you Mwah.